Hello, I'm Scott Soshnick. And I'm Evan Novi Williams, and this is the Hollywood Takeover Sports Business Podcast, the Sportacast. All right, Novi Novi, I'm I'm just feeling ambivalence. That's it. I, I I'm not high. I'm I don't not know low. If that's better, Scott, than, no, <laughs> than I where think, I leave you sometimes. Yeah, but yeah, I, I don't. I, again, we're on short notice. I mean, literally 30 seconds before we started, you said, "What are we starting with?" So there was no preparation. All that's what you came up with. Um, I'm, I'll let you off, but. Uh, nothing. No, didn't do anything. Didn't move the needle. Okay. Well, let's get into the news. Uh, the the it seems appears as though the the long anticipated courtship of Paramount is over. Eight billion dollar merger with Skydance. There's a lot of of sport interesting sports connections here. This is obviously the parent of CBS. So a whole bunch of, of, of sports assets and rights in there. Um, the, the Skydance portion uh, being backed by Redbird Capital and Jerry Cardinal, a group that does a whole lot of investing in, in sports team ownership and other leagues, et cetera. Um, we can go wherever direction you want to go, but, but a big uh, multi-billion dollar Hollywood tie up between studio and, uh, and, and media network. David Ellison will be the CEO. Jeff yep. Schell will be the president. I want to go back to the beginning of the start there because it like took me two seconds. You know, having sat next to me for oh so many years now, you know I love alliteration. Yep. You couldn't come up with anything Paramount podcast like something there. <laughs> Nothing like you want to try it again. Paramount like profit uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you ready. Three, two, one. Hey, hello, I'm Scott Soshnick. You're Vivi <laughs> Williams, and this is the Paramount Performance Profit. Podcast. <laughs> I probably could with a little bit more more notice. All right, but but anyway, um, yeah, you know, again, this was on again, off again. The, this the, was the like key. a Hollywood story in and of itself, right? Yeah, just back and forth. But if you read uh, Anthony Krupe's quick take, Jeff Shell was just on. You know, we have an ecosystem where you know it's not surprising that the cable bundle is shrinking. You know, those those homes with cable going down, and of course, you've got your your streaming services as well, and. Um, you know, Paramount's in on that game, Paramount Plus. Um, but what becomes of the CBS portfolio? How do they utilize it? My guess is it becomes even more important uh, to, to the whole right, operation. Yeah. yeah, you know, NFL. What Jerry's involved, Jerry Cardinal's involved in what? He's, you know, he's got his hands in on the NFL and, and private equity, uh, golf, um, college ex, sports, ex, US, UFL, UFL uh, yeah. AC your, Milan, your team, the soccer. cricket team. Yeah, so he understands. NFL on Everpass, so our yep. media joint venture as well with the league in terms of 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 out of home viewing for a lot of leagues and and, and sports properties as well. Yeah, he built on location. So yeah, let, let me tell you this: Yes Network, Fenway as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, Liverpool uh, and yeah. Red Sox and and Penguins. Right. So, but here's a good rule of thumb: if you can find a way to associate your business with the NFL, it'll probably yield a good outcome. Like, should we yeah. start there? Like CBS has the NFL. That's good. It's good to have the NFL and, and figure out what you can do in the portfolio uh, around it. So, um, yeah, we're, we're certainly looking at a, a sports heavy CBS uh, as part of this deal. And to your point there, in the in the media call announcing this deal and detailing it, Jeff Shell, one of the things he said was they're looking at $2 billion of cost cutting that is going to come. But... They are looking to grow the sports portfolio. So to your point about um, thinking about where sports fits in the direction of this new mega media company, it does seem very clear that sports is going to play an increased role in what they're doing. Again, if they're looking to cut $2 billion worth of, of, of expenses, but also to start paying more or increasing what it's doing for sports rights, it does seem very clear that sports is going to be a bigger piece of the future uh, of Paramount and Skydance and not a smaller piece. So $2 billion gets you what, like an eight game package or something, right? You know, <laughs> these days you can have three NBA games, one of which might be on Christmas, which is now being taken over by the NFL. Yeah, you, you could buy a, a, a fifth of an NFL team with, with that money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can be part owner. Of it. Why, why rent Why rent the IP when you can buy it? That's what yeah. we've heard on it. You know, so well, yeah, what's Paramount going to go out and buy here? Um, and we should say real quick that this, this is an agreement in, in principle. There's a, a, a go shop provision in here. So Paramount can 
can look for the next 45 days for a better offer. If they do get that, I think they owe Skydance. I think $450 million is the quote unquote severance fee. Uh, in, in, in that situation, there's also, I'm sure, regulatory FCC or, or whatever it is, some governmental approval that's going to need to happen in, in, a, in a merger or a, or a media tie up uh, this large. So th- this is going to take a while to happen. But uh, certainly given the, the, the provisions there, and I'm sure uh, anticipation or optimism about, about regulatory stuff, um, everybody seems to be excited about this thing actually happening. I like you using industry jargon. You want, you want to throw some other stuff or you want to throw a rofer? Like like you better, what do you want to throw out there? What other industry jargon do you want to go forward that maybe you learned in the last week or so? This deal is not done. There's things that could happen. There's that things that could happen. And if they don't happen, then, yeah, they, then, then you know, CEPA, or, uh, Paramount's going to owe uh, some money. Like that, that's the way we'll say it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you watch on CBS? I mean, NFL, what else? What do you, you watch? Oh, you know, you I'm know? a big fan of Ghosts. Shout out to, to my buddy Asher and his show. Um, I, it, oh, I didn't know almost, that was on CBS. Almost okay. nothing. I, I watch NFL games, sure. Um, I watch March Madness. Yeah. Um, there's probably some college football. They, they yeah. lost the SEC but got the Big Ten. Is that right? There's, there's some college football I'm sure that I'll watch, but – I don't know. They, they have the Grammys, whatever the award show they have. I'm not a big award show person. Um, I mean, I, I watch very little TV, period. But I can't say I, I, we're not Paramount Plus subscribers. I'm, I'm not a big uh, – I wouldn't say I'm a big consumer of the of the Paramount or even the Skydance uh, portfolio. Right. Well, you, uh, you and I know Jerry pretty well, and the conversations have for years centered around sort of sports tangential, right, yeah. and mm-hmm. and and – sort of thematic businesses and the tie between entertainment and sports. And, you know, Dwayne Johnson is, is part of the UFL and Danny Garcia. He, he's always been this fascination of sport as entertainment, uh, businesses that can be built around the sport that can support the league or the team itself. So uh, now that you've got this mega, mega media company, uh, you're looking at what, what, what else can you do? With that as the framework, and I'm not saying I have the answer, but the, I can guarantee this: that they will look to build other businesses that that uh, feed into this ecosystem, that support the ecosystem, or are born out of the ecosystem that'll fill a need. And, and to that to that point, the you and I both saw this on on Twitter uh, on uh, today on Monday. Michael Mulvihill, Fox Sports uh, executive and, and a really guru. good really good follow on on Twitter for when for he his, says something's a guess, it's not really a guess. He's got the data to back yeah. it up. So he, I'll read it here. Easy prediction: over the next year, sports will surpass entertainment for the first time as the most watched type of content on the four major broadcasters. So that's CBS, and then obviously the other three, but. In terms of, of of most watched, I assume that the, I don't know if that's ratings or if that's total numbers, eyeballs or time, whatever it is, by some metric in there, it sounds like sports is going to overtake the studio and other entertainment uh, pieces of what they're doing again as, as another data point or, or, or piece towards the idea that for companies like Paramount and like CBS, uh, sports is becoming a bigger piece or, or a more important part of what they're doing moving forward. Remember when I, I just looked to the left to you and I was like, isn't sports entertainment? And then I guess obviously they're. <laughs> For sectioning that out, but I was yeah, like, yeah, I'm assuming he means like scripted and reality television versus sports. I, I do my best to hold up my end of the bargain with uh, Law and Order reruns, as you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I can only do so much. Let's go, old people. Let's get back to that. Um, and but it 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 really interesting and takes me back, and I chuckle because Evan, you don't know a world of four network or three networks. You didn't, no. you were too young. Like for yeah. me, it was ABC, CBS, and NBC. Like that was your, your lineup. And, uh, you know what, I mean, the Simpsons was on, you know, became on Fox. So, you know, we got that, um, it was a part of like the Tracy Ullman show, but what made Fox Fox like in this whole discussion, how did Fox become a major network? How did it, how did it become legitimized? What did it do? Is it not the NFL? It's the NFL. No, okay. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And same so, with CBS, right? Didn't the NFL kind of save CBS at one point in the in the 70s or 80s? Well, there there were networks that thought they could go without like NBC that thought, no, oh, we don't really need the NFL. Yeah. You know? And then they go back and get the NFL. Um, but it, it's it's the centerpiece. Yeah, it's the centerpiece of it all. It was the centerpiece of, of it, it. I like the frame of reference. For me, there was a network that did not exist. 
that became legitimized because of that football thing. For you, it's been there the entire time. So that I, you keep that perspective when you look ahead and say, okay, what about this diminution in the cable bundle? What about streaming? I don't know. Yeah, but I know building it around the sports properties, especially the really popular, expensive sports properties, is a good way to sort of make sure that you'll be around in the future. Yeah, I think that's right. So uh, let's move on. Let's go. Speaking NFL. of the NFL. Yeah, the speaking NFL, of yeah. the NFL. Uh, Kurt Badenhausen, our colleague, uh, broke a big piece of news on Monday, uh, getting his hands on the, the amount of money, about $404 million that every NFL team received last year from national media. And for folks who don't know or aren't familiar with the setup, the NFL cuts all of its national TV and sponsorships into one big pool. They divided up 32 ways. Everybody gets an equal size check. The Cowboys and the Bengals get the same check. Last year, that was four, $404 million. Really does underscore how big and how successful a business the NFL is. I'll toss some numbers out there just for context. The salary cap, $224 million dollars last year. So this is before any team layers on money that it's getting from concessions, from parking, from ticket sales. It's a good all thing those things don't local, cost all that much money. Just a little just a little local bit. revenue comes on top of the four hundred and four million dollars, which itself is significantly more than the biggest cost expense that these teams have, which is obviously the cost of its players. Um the, the NFL remains the 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 envy from a business model standpoint of owners and and of uh of executives all over the sports world. I'm not really sure how to react to that uh, soliloquy because you know, some numbers you you gotta give them all. You left me nowhere to go. I mean, <laughs> well, now what? Like, what there's tons what, of stuff you can. What say do in you there. What do you want me to say about the NFL? It's a really good business. And how about this? I will say this: take that Green Bay Packers. Take that Green Bay. Nobody's waiting for your disclosure as a quasi publicly traded company. Nobody. No, Badenhausen doesn't wait for that. He talks to people ahead of time. He gets the numbers and says, "Here we go." I joked so, that, that he's doing what, what Woj and Shams did to the NBA draft, right? Yes. Which is just ruining ruining the thing right before the uh, right before the disclosure happens. Uh, so so kudos to Kurt there. I, I was curious, Scott, just thinking about that four hundred and four million dollar number into context. How many NF NBA teams? I don't know if you saw this tweet. If you if you didn't, I'll ask you as a trivia question. I did, I did not. Go How trivia. many NBA teams do you think had more total revenue than four hundred and four million dollars? How many Last NBA year. teams do I think had? Hmm, hmm, not going to be a lot. It's four. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, but, but you don't even give me the game. Oh, sorry. I thought <laughs> oh, that, was okay. your that was your answer. I, I was going to say two, but okay. okay. Yeah, you're hey. right there. It's it's the Warriors. It's the Lakers. I, I was going to say Knicks. I was going to say Knicks and Warriors. I wasn't yeah. sure about the Lakers. So so, so to, to to put a bow on that, the 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 only four NBA teams made total in revenue last year. What all 32 NFL teams made before they sold a single ticket, sold a single piece of concessions, merchandise at their stadium, etc. So the the, the valuations in the NBA are creeping up quite quickly, uh, not quite at NFL levels, but they're, they're, they're getting close to what we're seeing at the NFL level. But, but, but ho, 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 I, I think they are like the Celtics, as we know, were for sale. Yep. So we have a, I mean, Kurt's valuation of the team that does not own its building is five point something billion dollars. Yeah. Op open market. Nobody, I think, I think people did not really expect this to hit. You're going to get a little bit of a froth there. Um, I, I, would you be surprised if it was a $6 billion transaction? I would not. No, no. neither yeah. would I. And that's exactly what Josh Harris recently paid for the commanders. Yep. And yet, if I'm in the business of football versus the business of basketball right now, if I say, hey, you can have the Celtics side by side, you can have the Celtics or you can have the commanders. I mean, that's a no brainer. Give me no, the commanders. Yeah, no brainer. Yeah. That's a no. Yeah. I mean, you cannot, you cannot be dumb enough. As an owner in the National Football League, and I think I've said this before. Stop me if you've heard it, you know, too many times. No, it's good. But, but what owners seek in collective bargaining is commonly referred to as an idiot-proof system. They want a system where, and this is whatever sport you're dealing with, that there, there is nobody dumb enough out there to outspend the revenue that you're going to make money no matter what. That is, in essence, what they are chasing. The NFL has it. <laughs> and by the way, negotiating more games, splitting up existing uh, inventory for new packages uh, on exclusive basis of so adding to the end to the pot. Uh, I, I can't 
really can't figure out why anybody would fork over six billion for an NBA team if at all any NFL team might be on the market. I mean, yeah. not Dallas Cowboys. That's going to go for a lot more. We have current average NBA team four billion dollars. Average NFL team five point two billion dollars. Um, and, Guaranteed and, and, cash flow positive. Guaranteed. Yeah, and, and the thing we haven't said outright, but one of the major things driving that is is obviously the hard salary cap. The, the NFL has a hard salary. The envy cap. of all exactly owners. Exactly what you're going to be paying, roughly exactly what you're going to be paying. And you know the cap of what the max you could be playing, paying. Whereas a team, and, and you use the Celtics, Celtics are a great example. Keeping this team together is going to be extremely expensive and could cost $150 million in, in, in excess luxury tax bill in 2026. Uh, if you fold in Drew Holiday and Chris Stapps Porzingis, and then obviously the, the, the big contracts for, for Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum already. Um, Evan, are you going to talk aprons? Are you, are you heading not, to not, apron not conversation? Talk aprons Cause oh. I don't understand the aprons, but <laughs> read, I, read, I will read say story. obviously that, 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 yeah, the, 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 the main business lever that is driving this comparison we're talking about is that there is fixed costs in the NFL and there is not fixed costs in either major league baseball or in the NBA. Uh, and that leads to these really tough decisions where winning and, and making money can sometimes run in, in opposite directions. Yeah, and I know which way they're going to choose. Making money. <laughs> choose choose the making money path. Yeah, I don't have my record bed running as you know. It was, it was some did not, you know, come up on my screen no, today. No so I, yeah. I don't yeah, well I don't know backup, but I don't even have a countdown. So I don't know how long we've been talking. I mean, I can do this all day. I have to we rely on you for 16 ten- minutes and 22 seconds. <laughs> oh, that oh, that's nothing. See, yeah, yeah, we that, got time. Yeah, that's nothing. Um yeah, for the but the NFL, like again, what what a business and finding at uh, 32 Equity, remember the private equity arm of the NFL, which is sort of taking the the approach of, well, we're the NFL. We understand some of these startups cannot pay what a normal, you know, a, a normal deal would be. So why don't you give us a piece of your company? Why don't we take some equity in your company? And you think the NFL is bummed that they only started with a million dollars each, started a $32 million fund, right? Why don't you all give me 10 uh, and, and, and it's, by the way, it's, it's all, it's all interconnected. Like Kevin LaForce, you know, a friend of the program yep. ran 32 equity. Now he's over at Redbird, which we talked about it is as part of this, this paramount purchase. Um, but imagine when they hit winners, when they hit the companies, imagine if they find a unicorn in, in some of the companies that they've invested in, then the owner, boy, are they smiling. It's sort of like a little BAM tech action where, where MLB uh, had ownership of their streaming service. Yeah, we started this conversation talking about how getting the NFL saved Fox, right? <laughs> Imagine if part of that deal was a little bit of equity in, in, in addition to, to the rights payment. Um, and I don't have an exhaustive list here, but the NFL's 32 equity has pieces of fanatics. It has New Era. It has both Sport Radar and Genius Sports. It has Noble. It's a lot of these companies that, yeah, the NFL is going to hit home runs on some of these, right? It probably already ha- it has already. The, the valuation they bought in at Fanatics uh, is is dramatically lower than the valuation that Fanatics got in its most recent equity round, thirty one billion dollars, about a year and a half ago. So when, when's um, Fanatics going public? You're the man. When, when do we have this IPO? It's gonna it's gonna be a while, I think. Right now, I think. <laughs> I'd love uh, that. This is my favorite discussion in sports yeah, business. Yeah, it's it's. And we, we don't have to go too deep into the tangent here. Yeah, I think that I think Fanatics wanted to go public quickly when it was an apparel company and and a, and a giant in that world. Michael Rubin decided instead to expand into sports betting, to expand into trading cards and collectibles, to really push the envelopes of what Fanatics was, uh, raised a lot more money privately than I think he intended to pre-IPO. And now the sense I get is that the the, the business needs to stabilize, that, that instead of being in hyper growth mode, it needs to have delivered some sort of stability that the public markets are going to desire uh, before you can IPO. So if you would ask me three years ago, I would have said it was within the next 12 months. And right. now I, it's not within the next 12 months. I think it is, it is most likely uh, significantly further out than that. Boy, if, if having the NHL jerseys without the bubbles on the uh, shoulders isn't enough to stabilize the, the business, I don't know what is. I mean, come on. That, that's where <laughs> that's we're looking at. right there. Let me ask you this. <laughs> For first day, slide on the deck. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Uh, are you a NFL podcast listener? I am not an NFL podcast See, listener. I, I was absolutely shocked at the number of people who read a story of ours over the weekend. Uh, Jacob Feldman broke the news that the Around the NFL podcast, 
was going bye bye. It was being replaced by like, nomenclature. Two of the three hosts, I guess, are gone, and it's NFL Daily now is going to be the new name of the show. Which I, I'm not going to lie. You know what that meant to me? The whole the story meant absolutely nothing. I'm like, <laughs> okay, like, all right, Jacob, the good work on the weekend. You, you got a scoop of you know, uh, but Evan, absolutely shocked at the number of people who not only read it but commented on it. Um, I, I, you know, I, you guess you got to know what you don't know. And I know NFL is really popular, but I had not heard of this podcast. Um, it has not been on my radar screen at all, but apparently football fans uh, are sad to see this thing go. The NFL, obviously in, in transition on maybe the, the media and entertainment side, ESPN may be taken over. Um, change. I don't know what this change does. I got to tell you, I still don't know what this change does or the reasoning behind the two hosts leaving. All I know is that this podcast is tremendously popular outside of the United States, and it's very popular here as well, and tons of people read the story. So uh, I, I just touch the NFL, and I should not be surprised that lots of people care. Yeah, the, 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 the most interesting thing to me here, which you, which you touched on, is just the, the undergoing changes at NFL media. And earlier this year, the NFL Network canceled NFL Total Access, the TV show, which had been on the air for more than two decades, uh, there's been reporting that Michael Irvin, Andrew Siciliano, and James Palmer, who were on that show, on air talent, um, are, are, are the NFL is moving on from them. Uh, the NFL has been shopping or at least discussing with media partners for years the possibility of taking on buying NFL media or partnering on it. As you said, ESPN is reportedly close or or, or maybe the front runner. In, in that deal. But, but yeah, the NFL is, is, is constantly reevaluating things it's doing on the media side that's working and is not. And, and NFL media is in flux right now and probably will continue to be until there is a joint venture or a new buyer, new owner uh, on the table. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I don't have much to say about the podcast itself. I've never listened to it. I've been, I've been following Greg Rosenthal who will stay on and, and, and host NFL daily uh, back since his times at, 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 um, at, at the at the NFL at the NBC's uh, NFL uh, Mike Florio's business I'm blanking on the name right now uh, PFT I'd help um, you if I could but it, I don't yeah, know. <laughs> yeah football talk is the, okay. is the name um, but yeah it's a it, it's a tough business as you know podcasts are, are getting downshifted in a lot of places right now and 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 not surprised even given all the things we said about the NFL at the top of the show about about the success of their business not surprised to see them constantly reevaluating that as well. All right. When should we have Brian Rollap on the show? Should we do that right before NFL season? Yeah, we do, do we, do we wait? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's sure. do it right before the season. All right. I'm putting a call out. Brian, I know you're listening. Uh, you'll be hearing from soon and uh, just you know, circle a date that works for you and we're available for taping. But uh, you know, as more evidence of the changing landscape, more of the same, you know, news out the Dallas Stars are moving on from their RSN. The, the, yep. the, the RSN had, had said, asked a judge to okay the split. And guess what we're going to have? A director consumer network for a sports team gee who would have thought that that might happen more of the same but again these teams have to teams leagues they got to figure it out no, no surprise that the the model that became kind of popular with the suns and the jazz about a year ago moving on from your rsn doing both a free over the air tv and then doing the direct to consumer digital offering uh, is becoming more and more popular and i think we're going to continue to see that for a large chunk of teams, again, not the ones like the Knicks and the Yankees and the Mets and the Red Sox, not the ones who own their RSNs and, and really have good economics for it, but a lot of the other ones who were part of the Bally's network, for example, or part of the AT&T or the NBC uh, RSN networks that were paid a lot of money and the, and the model was good until the model fell apart. Um, and at least temporarily, I think it's a good thing for a lot of local fans. I think it's it's easier, certainly, to watch jazz games in Utah this year, it was than, than it was the year before. Um, and that's probably going to be true for, for, for fans of the stars as well in Dallas. So that the economics are certainly changing for teams and owners, and they're going to get worse, at least temporarily going to get worse for a lot of them. Um, but I think there's a silver lining here and it's probably the silver lining that matters the most. I do think it's, it's at least temporarily shifting towards a way more fan friendly model. You know what I got, by the way? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna include Friday as over the weekend, right? Okay. Once I leave, yeah, you know, holiday but, weekend. Yeah, you know what I what came into my possession? Oh, I know, I saw. You it. know, yeah. I well, you didn't it. see it. You you saw. I saw the box. You saw the there. box. You didn't Maybe see. I'm debating. Yeah, <laughs> I really have nothing. You know, I'm debating whether or not I I bring it out of the box. And 
uh, my focus group of one just to be a jerk started ripping the box just to see him get annoyed. Yeah, you'll see the corner. I was like, are you, you wow. I'm just ready to kill him. But I, I, I do have in my, uh, in my possession a George Costanza bobblehead doll from the Yankee game uh, against the Red Sox on Friday. You thought you were going to leave to uh, echoes and choruses of New York, New York. Uh, man, they blew it. Two outs, bottom of the ninth, game tying oh. home run, and then more home runs in the tenth, and that was that. That feels but, appropriate on George Costanza night. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but silly and, and sad. In true Jerry, minute. now, but well, this is the question: Are the Yankees Costanza or are the Yankees Seinfeld? Because remember, Seinfeld, if Mets somebody fan. breaks up with him, yeah, he meets somebody new. Uh, if he loses yeah, yeah, money, yeah. he finds twenty in a pocket. As yeah, he yeah. said on the show, it all evens out. Right now, they better win a few games if they can have everything even out because it has not been a good stretch for the New York Yankees. And what what was that stat I told you? I, they said it at the ballpark, and I was like, "Is that right? Or did I hear it right?" Stolen but bases. you looked it up. That the Yankees have no stolen bases in their last nineteen games. That's right? insane. That's, That's insane crazy. to me. Yeah. That's insane to me. They're, they're the second lowest in the league. In this has nothing to do with sports business. Yeah, I just well, could not well, believe the stat. Well, going back to the Costanza bobblehead, I, people lined up for hours before what? the game to yes. get their hands on them, obviously. Are you going to open it and use it? Are you going to sell well, it? What you, you when you say it use it, when you say use it, what do you, what do you mean? Well, I think once you – certainly if you open it and throw the box out, like it, the, the value of these things, if you were planning to resell them, dramatically shifts once it's been out and – Colors change because of wear and right. tear, and the box is gone. So you say. So am I looking to exhibit it? Yeah. And, is, is this a, is this an asset that you are hoping appreciates in value to sell, or is this something you are going to enjoy as a desk ornament in the future? Well, let me say, I was there. All right, and like you said, many people lined up, and I was waiting for friends and waiting for people, and got there a little late. So I got there about six fifteen, and nobody handed me a bobblehead. So okay. uh, I got a, I got a, a text message. From a friend of the program um, uh, and and the Yes Network, Eric Handler, who said, "Did you get one?" And I said, "No, sir." And he said, "I got one for you." Wow. So so thank you, Eric. So so I, I I feel as if you know I'm just lucky to have it. Yeah, you know so I enjoy stuff little, like this. A little bit different. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking on eBay. Two hundred and ten dollars. People are asking for this thing. Yep. Two hundred and ten. Like, no offense, but what's wrong with you? Like, again, you know, there's how many? 17,000 of them out there? 15,000, whatever. I don't know. But I said, what if Jason Alexander signs it? What if Jerry signs it? What if Kramer signs it? Mm, I, 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 yeah, then you get it all signed. I don't know what that would be worth. Um, or what if I can get Rafi Devers? <laughs> Since he's beaten up he's beaten up everything else, Yankees. Why don't you get Rafi Devers to sign Costanza's bobbling head? So good. Before we close, Scott, I got to do Tour de France corner, obviously, since uh, the event is still going on. Um, <laughs> Scott, it, For three months your, now. This is your tour uh, business update. Um, the UCI, which is the governing body for for uh, France uh, for for global cycling, fined French writer Julian Bernard um, two hundred Swiss francs, two hundred and thirty dollars U.S. dollars, uh, for, for stopping during one of the stages to kiss his wife and his child. And this is the big scandal of, of the moment. Can't do it. Can't do it. How absurd it is that, that this rider riding through his hometown uh, with thousands of people on the side of the road cheering for him because he grew up around them, um, got off his bike. I, I didn't time it, Scott. It was probably three seconds. Kiss the wife, kiss the baby. But what's, <laughs> give a, give what's, a couple high fives and get off and, what? And, and fine for that. And I'll tell you what they said unseemly or inappropriate behavior during the race to damage the image of the sport. <laughs> that well, is you, the, you know uh, this, I mean, but should, system. should you be stopping? Is that, is that do people stop? Is that okay? I mean, pe people stop for like mechanical issues and stuff like that. Right. This was during the individual time trial. He was not going to win the stage. He was right. Not he said, does it matter? And, right. and the individual time trial, most of the people don't even try during that because why would you bother wasting energy if you're not going to win and it doesn't affect anyone else on your team? Mm -hmm. um, but the idea that he would get off and do something not race related seemed to be too much for the UCI. I obviously take the other thought here. I think this is great for the sport. I think it's cool to see a French rider riding through his hometown and seeing all of his friends and getting out and seeing his wife and the kid, all of it felt like a very nice heartfelt <laughs> seeing moment. the wife and the kid. And, and, and not, a, not, not to UCI. And I also think finding somebody 
two hundred and thirty dollars is is hilarious. I don't. I like. What is the point of this? I, I can't think of any U.S. sport that would find any athlete anything close to two hundred dollars for something. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I'd be curious if people who are listening have have a different feeling. But what uh, is the yeah, violation? Yeah. What is the uniform violation of the NFL? Like the socks are too low or something like oh, that. What's the uniform way violation? More than two hundred dollars, right? How much is oh. it if you throw the football into the stands? Two hundred? Maybe two hundred? Do you pay for the ball? <laughs> you have no. You have to if you if you're yeah. an NFL player and you throw the ball into the stands and celebration yeah you you get fined i think it's the price of the ball maybe 200 bucks well yeah i'm curious exactly it yeah yeah well that's uh no, football uh, into the stands first offense seven thousand dollars second offense twelve thousand dollars so you're paying do you... the ball is really expensive you're paying for significantly more i i the, see uh... that this is where i wonder what's going on in collective bargaining i know you're focused on you know probably more important issues like salary cap and um and and commissioner power and things like that but how do you not bring this down for the price, just to the price of the ball? So I, I, you're right. I, I'm looking now at the NFL's website about violations and what each of them cost. So I'll, t- I'll toss them out here for you. Please do. Uh, if you fight, first offense, mm-hmm. $38,000. Leaving the bench area during a fight, $11,000. Okay. Football into the stands, as I said, $7,600 first offense. Um, foreign substance on your body or uniform, $5,400. Stick unapproved them. visor or tint to your visor i see a lot of tinted visors do people just pay the fines yeah i think so personal messages you see a lot of those that's 11 that's uh eleven thousand dollars yeah uh, unauthorized logo or branding also eleven thousand mm-hmm. dollars your uniform violations your socks jersey under undergarments etc that's another 5400 gang signs not allowed there's no <laughs> price tag next to that one um, there's a bunch of, uh, player safety things for like blindside blocks, low blocks, chop blocks, leg whips, all that stuff. What about running to the be... sideline to kiss your wife and kid? It's not here. Not, not here. there. All right. Not, not, not embarrassing or, or conduct <laughs> detrimental to the, to the image of the sport. I don't think that would be a, uh, I don't think that'd be a fine. I don't know the answer, but I do know if they w- did make it a fine, it would not be $230. That's for sure. Absolutely. That's insanity, but all right. I'm going to put that in the side of the ledger of why I'm not watching the tour de france there you go. One, one of many reasons on scott's list he is scott soshnik you can find him on twitter at soshnik i am evan novi williams you can find me on twitter at novi underscore williams the show is we went long today aaron greenewald thank you what's very the much time? what's aaron, the time look down what's the line? digital media what? editor oh you're not gonna believe what's, what's, what's the time give me the time and then continue what do you got 32 minute show and there we go too long too long at sportacast which is the hub of the media network